Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the seance. Come on in. It is time for the Big Seance Podcast, and it's episode 9. Can you believe it's episode 9 already? Tonight, I have my first repeat guest, so she holds the new record. Marilyn Painter was my very first guest in episode 1, and I was recently talking to her, and I asked if she was interested in being on another episode, and I asked if she had something she'd like to talk about, and when she came back with the most fascinating proposal for a topic that I just know you'll love, and I'm excited to hear about it too. All right, well, I'll be back a little bit later for a break and some listener feedback. On to the show. Now, Marilyn, who is a psychic medium, is going to talk to us about psychic techniques to save time, money, and sanity. And who couldn't use a little extra of all of those things, right? I know that I myself have been a little crazy and stressed lately since school has been back in session and I've been continuing to you know, try to produce the podcast on a weekly basis at the same time. So I haven't had enough time or sleep, actually. Can you help me with that? And like many of us, I'm stressed and I certainly know how to spend money. So really, this episode is for me. So welcome back, Marilyn. Yay, thank you. I'm so excited to be back. Well, I think the topic tonight is, is something we could all learn from and use. So let's get started. My first question, are you really just going to teach us to be psychic? Is that what this is? Well, it's to shed some insight on how, first of all, what psychic means or what it means to me um, in the context of how I use it, but mostly just to give our listeners an idea of what you can do with psychic skills um, and, and how you can use it in your everyday life um, to kind of make your day go a little bit easier, to save money, save time, save your sanity, um, how you can use it for practical, for practical uh, reasons. Awesome. So, so what techniques can we learn to save time? Okay. Well, on time, uh, you know, time is multidimensional. Uh, we can go backwards in time. We can go look at our present. We can go forward in time. We can also go into um, possibilities of time. So knowing that time is multidimensional, what I do is when I have choices uh, like, uh, you know, what store is the best store to buy exactly what I'm hoping to buy and I want to get it for X amount of price, before I go to the stores, I'll scan my options and I'll know which one to go to first. I'll know which one is going to have what I need um, by actually moving forward in time and seeing myself in those stores and the outcome. So it saves me time where I'm not running around from store to store to store. So is that kind of a, a remote viewing kind of thing? Is it similar or is that different? You know, remote viewing, when I have done some experimentation in remote viewing and studied it a little bit, I see remote viewing as seeing it in, seeing it in the present time. Mm-hmm seeing it as it is now. What I see is I'm skipping timelines is what I'm doing. Mm. I'm skipping forward or I'm skipping from the trajectory that I'm on to a separate trajectory if I made other choices. So really I'm moving in multiple different ways to see possible outcomes. And the way I see remote viewing is uh, like if I was to want to see the chair you're sitting on right now, it would be for right now not the chair you're sitting on tomorrow. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Continue yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's, let's use an example. For example, if you have 
skipping time or saving time, this is a technique um, that if you have multiple choices, what you do is you experience it before you decide to physically do it. And it doesn't need to take an hour or two hours. Actually, I can do it within about five minutes or less. I'm going to give a little bit of an example and then kind of break down the steps of how I did it. For example, my, my husband and I were wanting to make a fire pit in the backyard. And we are not handy people whatsoever. But we saw a YouTube video, of course, you know, that gets you motivated to do it. <laughs> So we had specific um, brick in mind and a specific grate in mind, and we're like, okay, well, we only have a budget of X amount, which is a small budget, <laughs> and we're like, okay, where are we going to find the stuff we need and still make it within our budget? Well, my husband said, named three different places. Well, we can go here, A, B, or C, and right away when he gave those choices, I went right into mode where... I checked and saw myself in each one of the places, and then I experienced the outcome of being in each one of those places. So before we left, I knew exactly which store we were going to purchase the items and have it for the price that we wanted. And I told my husband, I, I told him, I said, hey, this is the store that we're going to find it, and this is the store that we're going to buy from. It's going to be perfect, exactly what we're looking for. Oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's go check out these others, though. Let's go check out these others, though. Which was fine with me because it, it's experimentation on my part. We're saying, well, let me see. Let, let's go to the others so I could see if what I saw was the correct outcome. He just didn't want to miss out on the shopping part of it, I think. <laughs> I mean, he's a little bit skeptical of trusting. <laughs> <laughs> or he wanted to spend more time with me. Well, I don't know. <laughs> So we did. We went to all three stores and we ended up going to the one that I knew it, we would find what we were looking for and purchase. It was the last store, of course, and it was exactly what we wanted, exactly what we needed. And all three stores had the possibility of having what we wanted. You know, it, it wasn't like I knew ahead of time or was in the stores ahead of time, but I just knew it because I already experienced being at all three of them without leaving my home. And you can get pretty good at it, and it doesn't need to take forever. <laughs> it's just a few seconds or a few minutes that I did it. Let me tell you a little bit about how I did it. The first thing, you have to know the specific results you want. You need to know what you want. Mine's specific. I want a brick that looks like this for less than $5. Very specific. Know what you want. Okay? Then... I see and I have to know what it feels like energetically to get what I want. So when I get that brick for the price that I'm setting it, what does it feel like? I need to know what it feels like. I work in feeling because I'm very strongly empathic. For others, it may be knowing what it looks like to have the choice that you want. And so then you connect energetically with all your choices. So I put myself in each one of the stores. I felt the energy of the store, and then when I was in that store, as I could see myself, I could feel myself in that store, which one of the stores matched the feeling I was wanting to have? And that's the feeling of finding exactly what I wanted, exactly within my budget. Which one matched that? And there was one that was clear. It, it just felt right. I knew mm -hmm. exactly which one felt right. And that's all it, it was. But you have to know what you want, connect, feel the choice, and then which one matches the outcome that you want. And so in a way, I saw myself, felt myself sitting in one of the, each one of the choices. And I sat there and I felt which one felt right. And nothing else. I, I didn't think of, oh, well, maybe they're having a sale or maybe this is happening or, I mean, nothing to clutter it. It was just pure, this is what it feels like. And is there any way to describe kind of what it felt like? Like, was it just like a pleasant, mm -hmm. uh, was it just like a, a feeling of confidence? Like that was it? Or how, how did you feel? Well, you know how if you go to a store and you have something you want to buy and you can't find it, yeah. Or it's really pricey. How does that feel to you? You're like, oh. But I, mean, I wanted so badly to walk out of here with this item today. Yes. It, it, so <laughs> you know, if you know what it feels like to walk out, either they have it 
and it's totally overly priced, you know what it feels like because you've experienced that before. I'm sure you've experienced going in looking for something and having no luck or going in looking for something and knowing oh, I can't afford it. You know what that feeling feels like. Mm -hmm. So if I place myself, I project myself already at the store, I see myself at the store, let's say it's um, oh, Lowe's, let's say Lowe's or Home Depot. I know where Lowe's or Home Depot is in my neighborhood. So I, I visualize it. I know what the store feels like because I've been in it several times, each one of the stores. So I put myself in that store. I know the energy of the store. I know what it feels like in that store. So I'm already skipping energetically. I'm putting myself in there. Then I feel and I sit in the energy of that store. And then I think of what I want. I want this brick at this price. And then I sit there and I feel, does it match? Oh my gosh, I can't find it anywhere. I can't see it. I can't feel it. I can't find it. Well, that's not the store. Mm -hmm. And I go to the next one because I know what it's like when I can't find what I'm looking for. And I know what it's like or what I feel like, what the feeling is when I've gotten myself a bargain. I know what it feels like when I find exactly, oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. I found it. It's a, it's excitement. It, I know how it feels. And so if I get that feeling in one of those stores, then I know that's where I'm going to find it. And I just know it. Now, if none of the stores feel that way, then it's called find store number four. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going with the choices. Maybe a store you haven't been to. <laughs> or, I, or I use another skill that I've used when I was shopping for my son's clothes. You know how when you... Um, can't think of someone's name. Let's say that you know a person and you know their name and kind of if you wait a few minutes or like uh, two minutes go by or five minutes go by, however long it takes for your brain to go through that Rolodex, mm -hmm. you know, and then all of a sudden the word pops in your head. Oh, that's the name. Okay. You know how that, that feeling is mm -hmm. where it takes your brain a while. It's working on it while you go on to other things. Happens to me all the time. Yes. Well, you know, you can do that. You can do that when you're shopping, too. Like when I needed to buy my son a pair of uh, dress shoes for his eighth grade dance, um, <laughs> the store that I was in, all the dress shoes were the cheapest ones were $60, $80. And I was like, no way. I, I only have $20 left. I, I can't buy dress shoes. So I asked, I said, I need a pair of $20 or less shoes. So show me where to find it. And who am I talking to? I'm just announcing it to the universe. I'm, I'm throwing that energetically out there. So as I was continuing to shop in that store and finishing up, I, was just, I knew that a name was going to come into my mind. I knew that it, the Rolodex was working. It was, it was mm -hmm. going to be the store. Of course, my mental brain was like, okay, well, maybe I can get cheap shoes at Payless. But so my mental mind was going through all the places where I could find shoes. And... That was my mental mind. But energetically, the Rolodex was working. It was sifting through. And all of a sudden, before I was ready to leave the store, Sears popped into my head. I heard the word Sears. I saw the word Sears. Just like when you're trying to figure out, I know that person's name and I can't think of it. And all of a sudden it pops and you know the name. That's how it comes to me. So energetically, it was working for me. And I would have never thought to go find some shoes at Sears <laughs> for my son, because frankly, I, I don't really shop at Sears. So I told my son, I said, hey, let's try Sears. He goes, Sears, what is Sears? <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's just to say that it's just not something, it's, I'm not familiar with Sears. So mm -hmm. it's not something that I already had in my mind and I already knew what types of shoes they had and I already knew the price. I had no idea. So I trusted that and I said, okay, let's go. So we went to the shoe department in Sears, and I was looking around, and so I asked the sales lady, do you have any dress shoes, some you know clearance dress shoes at that? And she says, yeah, and she showed me where they were, and I saw $20. And then with the $20, it was 50% off of the $20. Wow. So I did get shoes for $20 or less. I got shoes for half of that. So I got a beautiful pair of dress shoes nice dress shoes for him for ten dollars so i i, I kind of use that technique quite often where i'll just throw it out energetically and wait for the answer to come just waiting for it i'm not thinking about it i'm not trying to reason about it i'm just waiting for it to come 
Just like when I know that I can't remember someone's name, I know I know it, and I know it's going to come. So it just starts working on it, and then it comes out. So it saved me running around from store to store. Now, if I was in a panic or if I was stressed out, if I was, you know, had frustration or, you know, felt the time crunch, I wouldn't be open to hearing the word Sears. You know, I wouldn't be open to receive and to hear. So stay calm, know that it'll come, and when it comes, just go for it. Go for it. Try it. You'd be surprised. And how do you um, how do you not doubt yourself? Like when you ask yourself, or when you're trying to visualize these things, how do you tell the difference between you know just the thoughts in your in your mind and you know the answers that you're getting when you've asked this question, or is there a difference? Well, it that's that's a that's a great question because doubt is the will just quash it. Right, doubt will quash it. If you have any doubt whatsoever, then you're, it won't work. How do I know the difference? Because I know what was in my mind and I know what isn't. I know that Sears was not on my brain whatsoever. Right. It just happened. It's like one minute it wasn't there and the next minute it was there. You know, it, it, it just appeared. It just came. How do I trust it? Because I let go of fear. I let go of being wrong. I let go. So, so what if it was wrong? I know that what I need is going to be given to me as I need it, when I need it. I know that my kids are going to be taken care of. And through my actions is how they get taken care of. It's trust. It's just knowing. And if it doesn't happen for you, then I know that there is a reason for it. And I know that the reason it doesn't happen for me because there's a bigger plan. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. So you take the worry out. You take the self-consciousness of being wrong. And you just let it happen. It's very magical. Practice it. You know, um, play around with it. Experiment with it. So you can tweak it to how you work. It's, it's quite fun to do. And the more and more you get hit, and it works for you, then the more you trust it. Or you can just trust it right away and it starts working for you right away. But I know it's not me or it's not my brain because I know the difference because I know and I'm very aware of what is in my thoughts at that time. Like I was thinking Payless the whole time. <laughs> All of a sudden Sears came to my head. I was nowhere near the Sears track. It was nowhere in my mind. So I know that wasn't my thought. So being aware of what you're thinking and what you're already feeling. If a feeling comes up that is different than what you're feeling at the present moment, then that is also something that's a message. It's an energetic communication that is coming through. It is not you. Because if you're aware in your present what you're already thinking and feeling. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. When we come back from this brief break, Marilyn's going to give us a few more psychic tips, including how to get a good parking spot. So that's when we come right back. You're listening to the Big Seance Podcast with Patrick Keller. Look for us on iTunes and be sure to check out BigSeance.com for more discussion. Oh, look. We've got listener feedback. For tonight's listener feedback, I wanted to recognize and thank two people who really reached out to me and gave me some nice feedback and just, you know, started some discussion, which was kind of cool. I wanted to thank Arlen for sending me a screenshot of a really awesome review that he wrote for me using the podcast app. And apparently he was having some problems getting the review to go through. I'm not sure if it ever really did go through, but uh, he sent me the screenshot anyway, just so that I could see the nice comment that he made. And so I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me, even if it didn't go through. So thank you, Arlen, for that. I also wanted to recognize Jesse Acosta. And I hope I'm saying that name right. Um, Jesse sent me an email, actually, and gave me a lot of feedback and had some really nice things to say. Specifically, 
about the Ouija episode with Karen Dahlman. That was kind of a, a, a one of my favorite episodes. I really, really enjoyed that discussion with Karen. Hope to have her back sometime. But I also he also let me know that he designs and uh, makes Ouija boards. And that's one of many things that Jesse does. And so I wanted to kind of give him a shout out because they're really beautiful. If you go to www.jesseacosta.net, and that's J E S S E A C O S T A dot net, uh, you'll find lots of things that Jesse has going on. But you'll also, if you look around, find those Ouija boards, which are really nice. So wanted to give him a shout out. Thank you, Arlen, and thank you, Jesse, for the feedback. I'd love to hear from you as well. I have yet to get some audio feedback from a listener, and I will be so excited when that happens. And I'd love to be able to share your voice um, in the show whenever that happens. So don't forget the new feedback line. You can just call 7755 tell me so seven seven five five eight three five five six three or you can just click the record voice feedback link at big com at the top that takes you to my speak pipe page where you can leave a voicemail from any device and i also include the that link in every show notes so um, as long as you're in the show notes or at big com, it's pretty easy to find so consider leaving me some voice feedback so i can get really excited and use that in the show so kind of have some communication going on start some conversation thanks for joining us for the big seance podcast We'd better get back to the table while there's still some candlelight left. I have to tell you a story with back on the shoes um, part. You know, my son was was needing an, a nice formal outfit for his eighth grade dance, and it could get really pricey. And actually, I, I saved about a, I figured it up. I saved about a hundred and fifty dollars from what I would have spent without that. So wow. Take yeah. So I only had a budget of about 125. That was about my max of what I had in my pocket. <laughs> and so before I went to the store, I was like, okay, well, this is what I have. And I know I'm going to get everything that I want with what I have. You know, a pair of pants. He needed a belt. He needed a shirt. He likes his fedora, so we had to get a fedora. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, those are really important. And he needed a pair of shoes. So it was quite a, a number of outfits that we needed. Oh, and a tie. And with the tie, I'll go into, so we already know about the shoe. So with the tie, I held the tie in my hand. And as I held it in hand, I looked at the price. I said, well, that price is too much for me. But he really likes that tie. And I felt it. And I said, yeah. He's going to get this tie because it felt like him. It just felt right. And so I looked at the tie and I asked, can this tie be cheaper? How can I get the tie cheaper? And then I weighed it. And then what popped into my mind is look for another one like it. Okay. So I looked for another one like it and found the exact tie 50% off. It had the tag and it said 50%, but it was the exact tie but different color. <laughs> and so the tie that I had wasn't marked. So when I brought up both of them to the register, the lady's like, oh, yeah, that one should have been marked, and it wasn't. It's, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but with each thing, I, I know that I'm there and I'm led there, and I feel the energy of it. I just knew I could get it cheaper, and I just listen. It's kind of like, you know, let the Rolodex work. Just let it work. Throw it out there. I want this tie cheaper. Can I get it cheaper? If I didn't get the answer, hey, look at another one, if that didn't, pay, I just knew and felt in the store because I scanned the store. I knew I could get what I wanted there. I knew it. But I had to do a little work to do it. Okay. And it's the same thing with, you know, with the pants where he had the pants, the pants that he had rang up higher than my budget. Then I said, no, I know it's cheaper than that. So I went through and went through the racks. And again, I found another one of the same brand. Well, that happened to be a pants that was from another stock earlier that wasn't yet marked down. And so I knew which attendant to talk to and say, hey, it's the same pants and this one's for this price, but the one that I'm wanting to buy is 
a lot more. Why is that? Same brand, same look, same everything. Oh, well, we can give it to you for the price of that discounted pants. Thank you. you know, <laughs> but, you know, it, it's just knowing. It's just knowing and feeling it and knowing that you're there for it. Now, does does the family know that you are, are going through all of these things, these psychic techniques, or are you just really sneaky? Oh, no, my, my son knows. <laughs> I, 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 I teach him <laughs> yeah that's good that's good i teach him. he knows he, he knows very well he and he trusts it they, they don't they don't question you know my, my children don't question it what, whatsoever um they find it fascinating but also you know <laughs> i have to tell this one I, I do have myself a uh a scout in spirit um that finds bargains for me and uh it's my grandfather. My grandfather has been passed away now for quite some time. But when my grandfather was here uh, in the physical presence, he was a coupon clipper. He was always about money. He was always about saving money. He was always <laughs> about the bargain. So what better person to elicit help when you're looking for a car or you're looking to buy a house than my grandfather? So even though my grandfather is no longer here in the physical I still maintain a relationship with him. I still talk with him. I still, he still, he loves to help me. Um, and he loves to help me find what I need. And he, uh, he has a wonderful way of letting me know that, hey, he found this for me. So, for example, I needed a car. And all I had was $1,500. Now, who can buy, buy, actually, I wanted a van. So I was very specific. Here's the thing. Know what you want. Very specific. I knew I needed a van. And I knew I only had $1,500 cash. That's all I was going to pay. And that's what I needed. So very specific. I knew what I wanted. Just talking with my grandfather, you know, you can just sit quietly in it. And I energetically telepathy, you know, I call him, I feel him. I, I talk to him just like as if he was here in the physical. But I talk through telepathy, you know, through energetically. And I say, hey, grandpa, this is really what I'm looking for. Can you look around and see if you can find a van at this price, you know, we really could use one. Can you, can you do that? So, and when you do, just let me know. So a few days later, I'm, I'm going through Craigslist and I'm connecting with my grandfather and, and saying, okay, find me, lead me there, lead me there, lead me there. And then all of a sudden this van caught my eye and it was $1,500 <laughs> and it looked immaculate. I'm like, oh my gosh, perfect, exactly, exactly. Now, when I went there, it was, I've had the van now for over six years. So $1,500, six years, it's, it's wonderful. But you were probably thinking, okay, well, you know, you just found a bargain on Craigslist. How do you know that was your grandfather? Well, as soon as I went to the house that was selling the van, they opened the door and the man that opened the door smelled like my grandfather. I could smell him as if he was there. Cause I, wow. I have a very distinct, I, I know his smell. It's very distinct. It's, it's one of my favorite things about him is how he smelled. And it just was overwhelming. And then when I walked in the house, there was a picture hanging on the wall of an old time baseball, professional baseball player. Well, my grandfather was a professional baseball player and had the exact stance, an exact picture. It almost looked exactly like him. So my eye caught that, and it's like I could see my grandfather in that picture, and I could smell him. So that was his way of saying, this is it. This is what I found for you. I did work for you. This is what it is. And it's I still have the van today. It's it's the most magnificent bargain I've ever found. <laughs> well, and probably that's also just really, I'm sure he knows that you would be looking for validation, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be able to trust, you know, what you were getting ready to, to get into. And it's the same for the house. We, we just bought a house two years ago and we were looking all over. Um, and I asked my grandfather, so this is how much I have to spend. Can you find one that has four bedrooms and has everything that we're wanting and still in the neighborhood? Because we were having a really hard time and we were afraid that we weren't going to be here. But something was just, you know, he was just letting me know. I could feel this sense of calm saying, it'll come. I'm finding it. It'll come. And then I had a whole list of houses we were looking at and we were actually getting ready to settle on something that we just didn't, I, it just didn't feel right to me that I was willing to settle. 
And as soon as I was ready to throw in that towel, I ran across a house that was exactly perfect. But it was like $15,000 over my budget. And it felt perfect. And I could feel that, hey, this is right. This is it. So I trust it. And I go for it. And we looked at the house. And as I was looking at the house, all through the house, I could smell my grandfather as if he was standing next to me, walking with me. It's like my mom asked me, well, how does the house feel? And I said, it smells like grandpa. Um, <laughs> so he was with me as I was walking through the house and looking at it. And it was absolutely perfect. But then looking at the price, you know, I, I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so over a budget. Well, they ended up coming down off of their price over over twenty twenty five thousand to match exactly what we had, and so we did get it. It was the the real estate agent does did not was actually kind of laughing at us when we said, "Hey, we're only <laughs> offering this," <laughs> and she didn't think we would get it at all, and we did. I knew we would. I knew we would. It was it was for us. Um, so again, know exactly what you want. Trust that it'll come, you know. I, you know, I almost made the mistake of, of not trusting that and just going with something just because I lost patience. Mm -hmm. but at the moment, I was ready to lose patience. I found exactly it was shown to me. So, just trust. Just wait for it. It's coming. So it helps. It helps. You know, even let's say you don't have a relative that's passed that can do the work for you. You know, kind of scouting and looking and and I feel that hey, they have connections of people who are crossing over. And when people cross over, they leave cars behind. Mm -hmm. he has connections and so i said hey <laughs> if you know anyone who crosses over and actually that the car we got was someone who just passed away a few months prior and they were really just getting rid of the car and so i really feel that you know my grandfather connected with someone who just crossed over and uh you know said hey yeah i know someone who'd like that car <laughs> or or do you have like contact information for your grandfather so that we could also <laughs> All contact him and try to use him as well. <laughs> well, you know what I was going to say. If you don't have, if you don't have someone that you know that that's like that, but or is good at that or has like that, just ask in spirit. Just ask for someone who's who's skilled in it, and say, "I know, just know." You know, say, like, "Is there is there anyone in spirit who has my best interest, who just wants to help, that can help arrange?" For me to get this for this amount of money, you know, set, set what you want, make it very specific and then trust that it will happen. There's so many in spirit just just wanting to help, wanting to help and thrilled that someone is is asking them for their help. You know, mm -hmm. even, you know, through readings of people have crossed over they're They're not just sitting around doing nothing. They're doing all kinds of activities and they love the help. They love to help. Ready for a challenge. Yeah, so just ask for anonymous, <laughs> someone who's really good, <laughs> who's willing, who who wants to help. There, there'll be someone else step forward. Well, I have to tell you, I, I bet my parents totally wish they would have had knowledge of some of these techniques when, when uh, my sister and I were growing up because we spent plenty of time back to school shopping at Sears. And I know my parents probably feel like they spent a lot of money at Sears as we were growing up with, uh, as kids. <laughs> so I was very familiar with Sears. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think back when we were kids, it, it was that it just, I just hadn't been in a really long time. So it really struck me like what Sears shoes. It's just not the first thing that comes to my mind, <laughs> but it was definitely, definitely there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was a really great learning experience because, you know, I just experimented and I threw it out there and I was like, wow, that answer comes just like when you can't figure out a name of something, you know, the information, you know, how your brain just takes that time to find what you're looking for. It's mm -hmm. the same in spirit. It'll scan, scan for you. But I would say, be very specific, know what you want. Because a lot of times people are still not sure what they want <laughs> or are afraid to put limitations. Like I'll say, you know, I only have 125 to spend. That's all. That's it. And I am getting exactly what I want for that. I know I can find it. So so I know that uh, one of the things you told me that you wanted to also talk about is when it comes to saving sanity, which is also a nice thing to have, is uh, you talked about how you 
can always get a great parking space. And it's funny because I talked to <laughs> Marilyn's daughter today and I was telling her, uh, mentioned that, you know, we were going to do this interview and told her the topic and told her I was really excited to learn how to get a parking spot. And she was like, oh my gosh, it totally works. Mom does it all the time. So I can't wait to learn how to psychically get a, a great yeah. parking spot. <laughs> well, but I, yeah, I am known for the, the great parking spot uh, lady. <laughs> and I just want to make a point that whatever I say or whatever I'm saying here comes from personal experience and experimentation. So this is nothing I've learned in a book. It's through experimenting, experimenting, and experimenting. And I just report my experiences. So <laughs> it, kind of, it, it kind of started out, my mom and I would go out to uh, dinner almost every Friday night. And Friday nights are really busy. And the place that we would always go to was very busy, and the parking lot was always full. And <laughs> I didn't like driving around parking lots. And so it's a, quite a drive from where I live to there. And so I was like, okay, well, let me experiment. Let me try and see myself getting the best front seat parking lot as soon as I go into this restaurant's parking lot. And I would try it each time, and I would do it, like, probably about 15 minutes before I'd arrive. I'd be thinking about it. I'd state exactly what I wanted, and I knew it would happen. And I was waiting for the universe to arrange it. I knew the universe would arrange it. I already know, knew it was done. And so sure enough, when I was there, parking spots were full. But as soon as I turned the corner, someone would be pulling out, and I'd always get the front parking spot. It only happened whenever I thought about it. Now, there would be times when I would go and I wouldn't think about it. I wouldn't ask for it. Well, those were the times where I ended up having to walk far mm -hmm. from the restaurant. But I would say it was pretty much every time that I thought about it, requested it about 15, 10 minutes prior to getting there, there was always a spot. And my mom was always parked so far away and I would get right there at the door all the time and oh so I, you were competing for spots well i don't know if we were competing she just <laughs> always shook her head because you know there was always a wait at the restaurant so we'd like to sit in a car with a little buzzer you know but if you park too far away you can't sit in your car yeah yeah <laughs> but i would always she'd always kind of wait for me because she knew i would get a front a front parking spot right in front of the restaurant and i always did because it always arranged. And it would be someone just pulling out as I was coming in. And so it got to be a joke. I said, no, Mom, I arranged that. I'm not lucky. Because in the days I didn't think about it, then it doesn't happen. <laughs> so she began to, I, I guess, I don't know if she believed that I was just lucky or if it was just happening. So here is what made a believer out of her. She was with us on a, uh, my my daughter had a, a choir Anyway, an event that we mm -hmm. were at a hotel, and the hotel had a parking garage. And at the time when we were coming into the parking garage, it was absolutely full. And we needed to find a parking spot, but the convention was so large, people had to park far away from the hotel. Well, there was no way I was going to walk five blocks when I was paying for a hotel. And I said, I'm going to get a parking spot. So I go through that parking garage and couldn't find one, couldn't find one. And I'm getting upset and getting upset. And it was a dead end one that you had to back out. And I was getting <laughs> oh, all upset. No. I done forgot because my mom and I hadn't been going to the restaurant for probably a year now. We kind of stopped it for a while. And I forgot all about the parking situation. And my mom said, well, Marilyn, what happened to your parking guide who always finds you a parking spot? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, yeah, I forgot about him. Well, let me call. Let me call upon that. So I took just a couple of seconds because I, I forgot. See, I was all stressed out. I let stress get to me. My mind was cluttered. I wasn't asking for what I wanted. I was just complaining about the situation. You see the difference? Mm-hmm. So she stopped me and reminded me, and I was like, oh, yeah. Well, when that happened, I just took a couple breaths in. I connected with the parking guru up in spirit or however this gets arranged, asked exactly what I wanted, and asked for it to be arranged. 
So as I reached the dead end and there was cars coming up and down trying to find parking spots in this dead end garage. As I was trying to back up through the garage, lo and behold, right next to the elevator, there was one empty parking spot. I got the parking spot right in front of the hotel elevator. That's awesome. Just like that. Just like that. And there was at least five, six cars lined up coming towards me and behind me trying to find parking spots. And that was the only one there. And, and all it took was for me to just calm down and remember who I was and who everyone is. We're creators. We can manifest exactly what we wanted, but we have to know what we want. And we need to calm down and clarify so that we can receive what we want. And that was a huge lesson for me. And so, so anyway, it was the best spot in the whole entire, whole entire garage. Well, you know, what, what's really cool is that um, I'm not, I don't know what the percentage is, but so there's a really high percentage of people who listen to podcasts, who listen to them in their car or, or on their way to work or wherever they're going. And so I bet you anything that there's people listening right now that are thinking ahead to that parking spot. <laughs> try it. Just try yeah. Just, try it out. That's a, that's a great experimentation to just practice, just see. Um, but I would say the steps are. So first of all, know exactly what you want. So I, I'd like to have a parking spot wherever it is in front or, you know, whatever you're wanting to do. Say what you want. Know that it will be there and ask with gratitude. You know, it, it's it's just a knowing. It's a knowing that it'll be taken care of. Now, one would say, well, you know what a spirit has to do. They got so many better things to do than a rearrange and um, orchestrate you a close parking spot. Well, the way that I see it is that it's really not so much another spirit arranging the universe. You are the creator. You are the one energetically making a request and energetically making, because you know, time is flexible. Time is multidimensional. You're making arrangements based on your creative energy. So you are the one creating. So what are you doing? You're driving. There's nothing better that you need to be doing right now than driving because that's what you're doing. <laughs> so you are the one creating it for you and the universe and your energy is responding back. So just try it. But the key is, is to, first of all, remember to ask <laughs> and know that it's going to happen. Know that it's going to happen. So maybe the next installment of this can be, how can Marilyn help me get out of this traffic <laughs> to get me to my destination on time. Maybe that can be our next episode. Well, if if you want to be able to get to where you're going in X amount of time, maybe sit and ask for options. Possibly there's a, there's a several routes that you could take. And maybe mentally or, or, you know, intellectually, you would say, oh, well, this route's got to take me longer, or it will be longer, or you're rationally rationalizing it out to where it's not a viable choice, but just sit quietly and just ask, say, here are my three possibilities. Here are my two possibilities. Could this second route get me there quicker? And sit with it. See yourself going. How does it feel? Does it feel like, oh my gosh, I'm moving so much better? And if so, then try it. Try a different route. Uh, but you got to ask. Ask, listen, ask for it. Ask is maybe when you're asking, you'll get a sense of time saying, well, it might be better at this time if you leave at this time instead of that time. Mm -hmm. Just There may be different options instead of getting up and just doing the same thing every day without trying to be the creator to make it to be what you want it to be. Now, does that make sense? That does make sense. Rather than just kind of being on autopilot and doing the yes. same thing over and over. Yes. And expecting a different yes. outcome. Yes. And and to sit with it. And you may not have to have the three different routes or two alternative routes. Just let it come to you. Take some time quietly, you know, during your day just to relax and just ask. And then wait for it to come. You don't need to think about it. You don't need to try and figure it out yourself. Just like when you're trying to remember someone's name. Remember, your brain starts going to work as you move on to other things. 
It works the same way. Information energetically comes the same way. Wait for it. Know that it's going to come. Know that you're going to get an inspiration and a solution or a suggestion. And when it happens, try it. Just try it. You know, it couldn't hurt. Well, I bet there's going to be a lot of people trying a lot of things after <laughs> listening to this episode. Well, why don't you, if there's anything you want to kind of um, close up with or throw in that you didn't get a chance to, and then why don't you also, once again, give us some some uh, information about where they can find find you and find your site and all that stuff, and I will also put it in the show notes. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, kind of I would say the last thing that I would – I'd really like to bring out, of course, because definitely a proponent of empowerment and to help others to see how life could be more fulfilling, more joyful, more empowered. And what we've talked about today are just ways to help you to live a little more worry-free because people worry when they don't know the outcome or they feel they have no control over an outcome. So the more in touch you get with psychic skills, which is just understanding energy and communicating with energy, knowing the language of energy, then it could help you have what one would say is more control of what goes on in your life. You know, just like the things, you know, I have control of, of what I'm spending or what I want or how I get somewhere just by communicating with energy. So the more that you are able to be the creator and manifester of your environment, the more control you have, the less worry, okay? Just let it happen. Trust that it'll happen, you know? And then life will be less worrisome, less stress. Let it happen. Put on the soapbox with that. You just, just let things go and just trust. Just play a little bit. Have fun. Play with it a little bit. Experiment a little bit. Know, knowing that it's going to happen. So how can they find me? Um, at My website is atasanctuary.com. And I give readings, uh, psychic readings, mediumship readings, and I also offer uh, private training sessions. So anyone who would like to work on developing their psychic skills in a one-on-one -on -one situation, um, I do offer that. Or in a group, um, I, I take groups and get a group of your friends together. Just let me know what you'd like to work on, what you'd like to learn, and I am willing to teach anything that I know or that I have experienced. I'm here to share it. Um, and everyone works differently and, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do that. So if you're interested in learning and developing your own psychic skills, you can find me on atasanctuary.com. Awesome. Well, thank you, Marilyn. I know that uh, normally um, when I head to work in the mornings, I automatically have a parking space kind of ready to go for me. But the next time I head for some place that uh, I'm going to struggle to park, I'm going to try it and yeah. I'll, uh, I'll keep everybody posted. Yeah, just just try it. Just see it. See it happening. Know it's happening. And when you see a full parking spot as you're as you're pulling in, if it's full, don't panic know it's going to come because many times I pulled into a full parking spot, but as soon as I was getting there, someone was pulling out. Don't panic. <laughs> know it's there. Try it. Just, just try it. And you know what? People can contact me and give me some feedback and let me know if you tried some of these things. That would be cool to, to, uh, to hear from people who tried some of Marilyn's advice today. I'd love to share that. Well, thank you very much, Marilyn. Oh, you, you rock as always. <laughs> and our record-breaking most appearances on the Big Seance Podcast, Marilyn Painter. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit BigSeance.com, now the home of both the blog and the podcast. Just click on the Big Seance Podcast logo or find it in the menu. You can also find and subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher. Do you have any comments or feedback? Please contact me at Patrick at BigSeance.com. You can call my feedback line at 77 
775-583-5563. That's 775-583-5563. You can also record audio feedback right from the site using the SpeakPipe link included in the show notes. I could decide to include your voice in a future show. Thank you so much for listening and reading. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out. But we'll see you and light them again next time.